Introduction to Stories from Wagner. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Wales. Stories from Wagner by J. Walker McSpadden. Introduction. It would be a longer story than all the stories from Wagner put together to tell where these tales began and how they grew centuries before they were set to music in the soul of richard wagner some of them had been chanted around rude campfires by savage-looking men clad in the skins of animals they were repeated by word of mouth long before even the rudest art of writing was learned and in various lands they were known though the stories often differed for in those days men believed in spirits good and bad and in giants dwarfs gods and goddesses they told these stories to their children just as real history is taught to-day and later the legends were treasured not only for their deep interest but also because they showed how people lived and thought long ago while the world was in the making when wagner the great music dramatist of germany was writing his wonderful operas he found much of this rich material lying ready at his hand other parts he adapted to suit his needs and it is the form in which he used the tales that has been followed in the simple retelling in the present volume hence the justice of the title stories from wagner let us pause a moment to see who this author was and how he came to collect his themes richard wagner's career extended over the better part of the last century he was born in leipzig may twenty second eighteen thirteen he died at venice february thirteenth eighteen eighty three his whole life was a struggle for his musical ideas were unlike any that had gone before but he lived to witness a splendid triumph and to-day his operas are produced more often than those of any other composer the following is the order in which the operas were first given rienzi eighteen forty two the flying dutchman eighteen forty three Tannhäuser, 1845, Lohengrin, 1850, Tristan and Isolde, 1865, The Master Singers, 1868, The Ring of the Nibelung, 1878, Parsifal, 1882. When Wagner was just beginning his career, he was in great doubt as to the choice of subjects for his operas. His first famous work, Rienzi, was based upon Italian history the english novelist bulwer lytton has written a noted novel using the same title and groundwork the legend of the flying dutchman which wagner next chose is one of the best-known sea myths in existence in every country sailors tell of a mysterious ship that is seen in times of danger or distress the captain of this vessel bears many names but it is believed that the varying tales are only versions of one original legend the german poet heine wrote one version and from this wagner obtained the first idea for his opera with tannhäuser wagner entered upon the purely german themes which he was thenceforth to find so rich a mine this story like many others was extremely old yet it had been treated only rarely ludwig tieck had written some verses upon it and from these wagner got his idea owen meredith the english poet has also given us a charming version entitled the battle of the bards while tannhäuser himself has been seldom written about walter van der vogelweide the minnesinger and friend of tannhäuser in the opera is the subject of many poems one of the last being by longfellow sir walter is set down in german history as an actual person and many things are told about his marvellous gift of song wolfram von eschenbach another historic character found in the operas once wrote a famous old poem entitled parzival here wagner discovered the germ of his beautiful story of lohengrin following the lines of an old and well-nigh forgotten legend the opera of parsifal though not completed till more than thirty years later was also conceived at this time and remained a cherished project legends of the holy grail with which it deals are familiar in every christian country 
there is much in the characters of both parsifal and lohengrin to remind us of tennyson's sir galahad in idols of the king which treats of the holy grail in tristan and isolde we have another legend which was well known during the middle ages it was known in wales ireland brittany and germany where it was a frequent theme with many singers or wandering minstrels like walter von der vogelweide one of the earliest german authors to write down a version of it was a certain godfried of strasburg and wagner had at his command this and numerous other versions english poets also have been greatly attracted by the tale sir walter scott in thomas the rhymer told the simplest version matthew arnold tennyson and swinburne have given notable poems of some length on the subject during the middle ages and particularly in the thirteenth century the city of nuremberg was the seat of a famous musical guild or training school for poets and singers in his master singers wagner has followed history for his scene characters and traditions though he has made droll use of them the master singers have left substantial proof that they really lived there are poems still in existence signed by sixtus beckmesser weit pogner and others while hans Sachs has left whole volumes behind and his memory is so revered that he is looked upon almost as the patron saint of his city longfellow says in his poem on nuremberg here hans Sachs, the cobbler poet laureate of the gentle craft wisest of the twelve wise masters in huge folios sang and laughed wagner also obtained his idea for the contest of song from one of hoffmann's novels entitled sängerkrieg he made use of the same idea in tannhäuser although the ring of the nibelung wagner's grand life work was not presented until eighteen seventy six he had been at work upon its four parts for more than twenty-five years previously he had published the first two parts without their musical score in eighteen fifty three the other operas which appeared in the meanwhile were but breathing spaces so to speak in the greater labour he had set himself to perform wagner was especially fortunate in his choice of subject the nibelungen myth was a great national epic one of the oldest of the teutonic race dating back to the prehistoric era when wotan fricka freya thor loki and the other gods and goddesses were worshipped in the german forests in the course of centuries several versions of the legend appeared some being found even in iceland under the name of eddas in germany a long epic poem came to be written by some unknown hand it was called the nibelungenlied and it is the most famous of all early german poems of course wagner had access to all this material but he made so many changes from it in writing his own poem as to create a new story one which independent of the wonderful music which he wrote to accompany it gives him place among the foremost writers of his nation volumes have been written pointing out the differences between his nibelungen story and the earlier legends but the purpose of this little book is not to criticize dissect or compare after giving these few needful names and dates we wish merely to follow the splendid fancy of this singer of songs and teller of tales wherever in the realm of storyland it may chance to lead us one further word however of frank admission while the spirit of the original is adhered to and very often the exact words are quoted it has not been deemed best to follow the argument too closely instead simplicity and directness have been considered preferable to the involved plots and symbolical actions of the operas the book is directed primarily to the needs of young people and is sent out to them in the hope that some time they may hear the dull booming of the rhine about the gold the magic fire as it sweeps to encircle the sleeping maiden the forest voices which greet the young and fearless hero the chorus of the pilgrims and the song which won the bride for a prize all these and many other good things are held in store by the future meanwhile the story's the thing and we who will never grow too old to believe in giants 
dragons and dwarfs and the brave heroes who ride over the world doing heroic deeds can still be thankful that wagner lived and dreamed his dreams of the past j w m end of introduction